connected with um, what what feels comfortable to you in terms of your identity. Um, and, and the original identity still is what feels the most comfortable being asexual. And I said, okay, well, what did it mean then to you to be having sex with someone? And they said, well, that wasn't sexual for me. That was simply doing something for a partner um, as if, you know, you had cooked them dinner or you had um, Interesting. done some mm-hmm. sort of other activity that made them happy that maybe isn't like your forte, but that um, you do because you love your partner and you care about your partner and they enjoy this activity. And so uh, so that's where they were getting their terminology of demisexual. They were thinking of it then that way. And so I think where we kind of landed after a conversation was I'm still asexual, but maybe when it comes to relationships, I see myself as demisexual. So I was like, okay. And the reason they still saw themselves as asexual is – they don't have any interest yeah. in sex, like, at all. Like, it isn't a part of their identity. It isn't a part of, you know, they have no interest in self-sex. They have no interest in pursuing sex. This is not um, an activity that they identify with. Yeah, I can see that because, I mean, it's like I have absolutely no interest in, like, I don't know, going to a con, you know, a, a, a comic con or something. Yeah. But I would go along if someone I was right. with really, like, you know, not every time. So sure. you got to find someone that's willing to like, okay, sometimes I'll go, sometimes right. I won't. Yeah. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I think that, I think there's other ways that we think about activities, you mm-hmm. know, um, and this person has conceptualized sex in very much, um, as if, you know, it's like eating or mm-hmm. as if it's anything else, right? It's just not something for them. That's yeah. Interesting. Yeah. And like, what a remarkable way of seeing things, you know, I mean, and it sounds like this person actually, I mean, knew the answer just needed to yeah. have a, have Processing. a confirmation yeah. and stuff like that. I think yeah. a lot of people know what the answer is. They just need yeah. to know they're not alone. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Normalize. I, I, yeah. I, I see that just, you know, in, um, talking to, uh, I mentioned this, was it last week, the week before I ended up talking to a customer in the store oh, about yeah. my bladder. Con- my, oh, I don't want to pee yeah. my pants surgery yeah. anymore. Yeah. And I think it was just really nice that she's like, she was no. I'm not alone in this. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and, it was, they were, yeah. and it ended up being a really comfortable conversation. I think she knew what she wanted to do, but it was nice to hear from yet another person. Yeah, it, it worked for me. At least go talk to a doctor. Mm-hmm. You know, for that time. Absolutely. It Absolutely. Well, and, and in thinking about that, I, I actually am really looking forward to the days of, of having an opportunity to wear like adult padding when I sleep at night because I, I don't want to get up in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'm this close every night. I'm like, should I just buy into it now? Because oh my God. I'm just, I don't want to. The bed's so warm no. and I don't like it and it's cold here. So, no. and, and, and I, I, I'm like, oh. So someday, yeah. <laughs> someday that's my plan. That's I have my never plan. heard anybody say that before. I'm that's actually looking first, forward to it. That's yeah. hysterical. Yeah, yeah. That's that's sort of my thought around it. Yeah. Well, okay, so my other question was um, about one of the, of the sex speak uh, participants, the poly polyamory questions. Because I watched. There was a couple seasons. I I keep looking to see if they're going to do another season. I think it was a Showtime series, Polyamory. Mm-hmm. Did you Did you see any of those? Yeah, I've seen a little bit of it. Yeah, and. Um, Every time I'm, I just, it was, I don't want to say it was like watching a train wreck, but it's like, I so totally can't relate. I mean, I'm like, wow, because to me, I'm like, somebody's going to get pissed. And in the second season, we definitely had that, you know, um, with this, this threesome, it was a guy and two women or whatever, but it's like, seriously, Dr. Markey, in your, in your opinion, I mean, is this realistic? I mean, can't, are, are we wired to be able to handle this? This is a great question. And this really is one of the questions that comes up a lot. Um, I I think it's more a matter of recognizing how all of us maybe already have multiple relationships without knowing it. Um, So so if you have – and and it also depends on how people are doing the consensual non-monogamy. So Mm -hmm. just like like anything else, there's lots of different ways that people can structure relationships. Some of those ways work better than others. Um, So what I often talk about with people is, you know – uh, at one point, um, for myself personally, I, I had like five different partners. Um, and those partners all played a very different part in my life, right? So they, they had very contained spaces that there was an agreement with each one and everybody knew about each other. Um, and, and that's, that worked really, 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 really well. Um, 
that's not all that different. Let me give you an example. So like I had um, what would be called in consensual and non-monogamy terms a primary partner. Um, And so my primary partner and I had more of an exclusionary relationship with each other um, in part because of things like jealousy. But here's the thing. We all get jealous no matter what kind of relationship we have, right? Jealousy is a natural See, that's where I come natural from human yeah. emotion. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And my experience with people who are consensually non-monogamous or in those kind of relationships or multi-partnered is you just talk about it more. It's just talked about differently. It's acknowledged. It's part of the realis- the realism of all relationships. Whereas when I've had more monogamous relationships or I've worked with people who do, it's almost like it's shameful to be jealous and and it hardly ever really gets talked about in a really productive way. So one, there's an acceptance of jealousy. Two, there's the opposite of jealousy, which you don't really experience unless you're having different kinds of partnerships, and and that's called compersion. So compersion... Uh, Colleen and I both... There's yeah. Words that we're like, what? There's yeah. a nickel word? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so within the consensually non-monogamous communities about five or six years ago... They they were st- still str- we still struggle with terminology like what do we call things because we don't have words for them, mm-hmm. so compersion is the opposite of jealousy. Um, compersion is where you might have a partner who you're really excited about who meets one of your other partners and you're so excited because they totally like each other like they're like that person's so cool like I see why you want to well, spend time yeah. with well, them. Well, I like it when my friends like each other because exactly. it makes having people over to your house easier. That's, that's exactly <laughs> this so. Is, this just takes it a little bit closer right. to they might have a sexual relationship to it. But then again, they also just or they might, might have not. a really, really, That's might right. not a really, really close That's friendship. Right. Yeah, which, and they're referred to as paramours because okay. it's your, and metamors, it's, it's your person in relation to someone else, but they're not directly your partner. So it'd be like your friend's friend, right? Mm-hmm. So we, when I say compersion, you think about like, oh yeah, I have a best friend who I want to meet my other best friend because I think they're going to really like each other and they do. That's compersion. That's that feeling. Um, Sometimes, however, they might like each other so much that they spend more time with each other at the exclusion of you, and you might get jealous. That's the same thing. I mean, it's really no different. We already have multiple kinds of relationships in our lives. We just don't think about them in the same way that people who are practicing consensual non-monogamy might think about them. So so I had a a primary partner... (laughs) And actually, the jealousy issue was not around sex in that relationship. The jealousy issue was around food. And, right. Really? Okay. Yep. So people in consensually non-monogamous relationships usually have very overt agreements and contracts with each other around what that looks like. And actually, even when we're not in consensually non-monogamous relationships, we have contracts too. It's just usually they're not made overt. Usually Mm -hmm. people just kind of assume they know what they are which as we talked about last time can run into problems because like what's cheating, right? Mm -hmm. We never really talked about it because we think we know what that is. But all of a sudden you're texting with your ex and and it's making me feel like you're cheating, right? Mm -hmm. So in consensually non-monogamous relationships, usually most of that is all on the table from the very beginning with a clear agreement. So his particular issue (laughs) was around me eating particular kinds of foods with people because he felt like that was a shared experience just for us at the exclusion of others. And so if I were to eat like crab or salmon, because we both had spent time in Alaska, that felt like um, I was violating the specialness of our relationship. So for like over a year, that was the only, we, we only ate those foods together. Um, And that was the exclusion. That was what the jealousy was centered around. And so that's, that's what had to be, to be the agreement, which, which was fine. Because there are some friends that you want to go to, you go see plays with. And then then if you don't call that person, you go to someone else and they found out that you went and saw King Lear without him. What the hell? Oh my gosh. I can hardly wait to see. Oh my God. I saw the billboard. I'm like, oh my God. Let's all go right now. We we, we might check in with other people. Turn this off and go. I love Shakespeare. We have to check in with the other people. So. So that's that's sort of I mean, and that's just one okay. example. But um, it it's very you know I mean here's the other thing like you probably have in your life you know maybe maybe you have a, a partner a primary partner that would be just called like a partner mm-hmm. when you're not in a consensually non monogamous relationship. But um, you also have other people still, right? I mean, you have like friends. You might even have exes. You have perhaps you have somebody that co-parents with you. 
um, you know, it's all how you conceptualize it. Um, so in that primary relationship, I had a secondary partner um, who I who lived at a distance. I didn't see very often, but we were close. We had a great relationship when we were together. We might be intimate, but might not. Um, and and we were close. I didn't have any exclusions around that relationship because it wasn't a primary relationship, right? So I didn't need to worry about food habits or whatnot. Mm-hmm. Um, but but what's interesting is some people might have just called that like a friend or a friend with benefits, mm-hmm. right? Okay. Yeah. So it's it's really or just someone that you hook up with occasionally. So it's really just how how you conceptualize it. it it's not that. It's not that a lot of consensual non-monogamy is completely different than mm-hmm. people who see themselves as monogamous. It's just that they're giving different terminology. They're calling things different things, and they're acknowledging relationships in a different way. Having said that, when you get into more like poly network type situations, like the show you're referring yeah. to, where you have like a live-in triad, yeah, right, yeah, or you have like a live-in poly family where it's like yep. five people then it gets much more complex. And in that case, I think the structure starts to become a lot more like if you have like a blended family or if you have even like a polygamous family, then it starts to look more like that because it isn't a one-on-one relationship with each partner. It's it's now a bigger living situation. And the reason I think that's more complex and becomes kind of like a mess is because you're just managing more relationships with more people that you live with. Which, right on top of each other. Right, yeah. which is yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah, and and with more people, it just gets harder. If you have more of the multi-partnered structure that aren't living together and aren't all together, then it's just compartmentalized, and it's really very... Out of sight, out of mind. <laughs> yeah, it's just no, not I, that yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. I have, I have friends that are in uh, polyamorous relationships, but I have no one that I know that is living together. Right. Yeah, th- right. I mean, you know, people are in different states, different areas, stuff yep. like that, yep. and you know, they might uh, they go visit this person a couple times a year, or they've always vacationed with that person, or you know, there's it goes through there, and everybody knows about it. Exactly. And, only, and honestly, only about half of them are married. Right. You know, it's going through there, just going, and, yeah. and sometimes it's one or both, and the other person is just, you yep. know, it just goes through there, but it's not under the, the same roof. That's right. And most, and, and these folks are not young. I mean, this is something that they've grown in to understand that's who they are. They're, you know, mm-hmm. they're, they're folks I've grown up with, so they're in their 50s too. Right. Yeah. 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 And I'm wondering if it, be, you know, it might be easier for, I mean, not now with Tinder and all that sort of stuff, you can create a whole bunch of different relationships and you and you can say i am uh, you, you're right up front yeah i am not going to be i'm not monogamous i'm not monogamous i'm consensually not monogamous and then that can look all sorts of different ways right. like we just talked about because there's tons of different ways that looks and this is why when my colleagues and i talk about this with people write about it do workshops we consider it more of just a relational orientation and on one end of the spectrum is monogamy, and on the other end of the spectrum is is consensual non-monogamy. And then there's all these things in the middle, right? So some people lean heavy monogamous. Like there are people who are like, there's no way. Not only am I going to be sexually monogamous, but I also want us to be, you know, the partners who never hang out with anybody yeah. else mm-hmm. ever, oh, right? Yeah. I'll be emotionally monogamous. Mm-hmm. I'll be, we are going to only exist to each other and that's it. And then on the other end, you have, you know, these poly network families. So, and then you have everything in the middle, which is why that term monogamish has really arisen because that's sort of that like middle ground area, similar Mm -hmm. to what you're talking, similar about Mm -hmm. what I have experienced um, and what a lot of people I think are kind of struggling with or thinking about, especially young people. They just have tons of questions, like tons. For whatever reason, I cannot get Arnold Schwarzenegger out of my head right now. <laughs> and it's, you know, I, I keep thinking it's popping into my head how, so he was married to Maria Shriver and then has the kid that re- it gets raised right under her nose in their house. Right. And I can't even look at that guy anymore. And it's not, you know, again, a polyamorous person, to me, there's so much more honesty there. But the fact that right. he, I, I just, I, I can't stand it that he did that. Like it yeah. really, the lying, yep. I just, I hate that. Yeah. And I, I think that's what, I, I'm a monogamous person. We're mm-hmm. not, I mean, we definitely have friends and, mm-hmm. you know, we're not whatever. You're I not don't, socially mm-mm. necessarily monogamous, but no. you have an exclusion around no. intimacy. We absolutely right? have a riot and we enjoy each other's company, but yep. we definitely have friends and stuff like that. But I don't like to share. But it's like, yeah, the lying thing is where I think. And, and so that's why I would watch that show, Polyamory, and just be like, okay. Yeah. I okay. 
you know, you know what I mean? I mean, it's not a judgment thing. It's just yeah. like, I know that even though I appreciate the fact that everybody's telling the truth. Right. But I don't think I can handle it. Right. And that's. 